it's just, yeah, it's frustrating, right? That now this is like the last 10 years, it should have been active and, and going and it's not. So it just- And we're yeah. behind now. Like that, that kind of hurts. Um, I remember back in the day, I would do like location reads on people. Like you'd like scroll over their name and it would say Brazil. And I'm like, I'm not fucking folding this guy. Call. I, knew, I knew you were yeah. going there to Brazil yeah. too. I, I, <laughs> shout out to Brazilians out there. Boa noite. That's uh, it's tough, but yeah, they've exactly that. All that that, now that we, whole thing has shifted. Now we're we're the worst. Like if you scroll over someone and you see Canada, you're like, oh, okay, this is probably an American transplant, and they're probably like years behind me from Germany, you know. And like at the WSOP too, um, I feel like if I sit at a table and there's like six different accents, I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. Or it used to be the opposite. And it, it's a shame our government kind of did this to us. Obviously, it's on us. Like there there have there are some Americans that are fantastic poker players still that really went out of their way or left the country to um pursue their goal of being the best. But it it's an uphill battle. I think it's really hard for people to be expected to leave their families and friends behind for so long just to try to be like at the apex of the sport. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. WPT is like I got 12th in one um, for like 44K or something like that. And that was like the the biggest sweat I ever had. I just like first was like 800K and I could just feel it. We're to two six handed tables. And I was like, this could happen. Um, and then I, with my last like 17 big ones, I ran eights into tens. And that was the end of that dream. But then it's really crazy how like certain tournaments can just like repeat themselves. It was maybe the next year I got 22nd in the same tournament. I just got a bunch of chips and I just like, really believed i was gonna get back there i had like certain hands i misplayed in the, the 12th place finish and i was like i'm not gonna let this happen again i'm not gonna wuss out i'm gonna put that triple barrel in and all this and when i was there i actually felt like it was gonna happen and then 22nd again like another heartbreaking these fields are 1100 people so you you've been writing or doing some things with doug polk and his channels i guess it's been poker crypto and now a little more shift in the, po the political uh, spectrum. So tell me a little bit about what that, how that came up and, and what exactly you do there. Sure. Um, it was one time when an internet troll just like did something good by accident. They, they uh, messaged Doug on Twitter and, and like me and Doug weren't even friends. We followed each other, um, but that was about it. And this guy, just random guy goes, Doug, you're not funny anymore. You should get Jamie Curse at a right for you or you're just like going to go down the tube, something like that. And I see it and I'm thinking, oh, that was kind of like a dick thing for this guy to say. And then Doug just messages me. He's like, oh, do you want to write? You have time? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like, sure. So um, for the last, it's been about a, a little over two years, um, maybe about three years by now. Wow. Um, that I've just been writing jokes, like contributing to his uh, YouTube channel and uh, doing some content creation. And it's fun. I mean, poker, you know, is like a grind and we're not very creative. You don't have like a creative outlet. Um, so this is like one way to actually just, I don't know, like do the left brain stuff for a little while. Yeah, you've been playing for a, a fair amount of time. I guess 2000, mm -hmm. 2009 got into it. What what made you at that point go from, were you playing a lot of cash games as well? Or is it, did, how yeah. did you start in the tournaments here? So I, it's so funny. I, I, I still sort of regret getting into tournaments just because I've never had that like amazing glory feeling of like one, 200 K bank or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I may have played a lot of cash. Like when I was still a lawyer, I would just like sometimes drive after work. It'd be like 7 PM. I'd drive an hour and a half down to AC, put in like a four hour, five ten session, drive back home. I loved poker so much. Um, and I, I started playing online a little bit then just a little, and you know, it was just easier to get into tournaments online. I just felt like, all right, I, I want to play for four hours at night. I would go play like the 180 mans, um, sometimes play some turbos and stuff like that. And then I just started getting more into it. Like if you're competitive, it's really hard to just stay in cash games. Like the glory is in tournaments. And I feel like I kind of like went that way because of it where I'm like, I want to win something. Like I don't want to say like, I'm up a thousand, I'm cashing out. I'm like, no, I want to like beat people at poker and I want to win. Um, and I, I just didn't realize that like the swings uh of tournaments and like the emotional swings you go on are are like pretty awful <laughs> i'm i'm doing it right now i'm like i'm playing a ton online wsop.com has like a, a huge series every seems like as soon as one ends they start a new one right. i've just been on massive swings like highest of highs lowest of lows like week to week um and i think that like i don't know i like i don't know what draws me to that when i've never even had that like amazing feeling of like 
winning something huge. I've I've played a ton of my poker life online. I would say like a very decent chunk of it. There there were two years in there where maybe I played five live tournaments. Like I would go for the series for a week or two. Um, and then the rest of it, I moved to Rosarito after Black Friday and I just played a ton of tournaments online. And that was satisfying to me. Like that, just playing 30 tournaments on a Sunday or whatever it was like, and just being like, okay, I'm winning like this. I'm good at this, you know, like that right. felt good. But then after leaving that and going to live tournaments, I felt like, what am I doing? Like, I know one bad Sunday, right? You could have one bad Sunday and you could probably brick like almost all your tournaments. If that were over a, a live year, that might be six months. Yeah. <laughs> like that, it's, it's just crazy for our brains to like try to wrap themselves around what variance actually is. And yeah. it's almost impossible. I still feel like when I'm winning, I'm never going to lose. And when I'm losing, I'm never going to win. <laughs> it's so tricky. Variance is such a wild thing too, because it's uh, it's really hard. You know, it's it's hard for us who even understand it and do it. But then you have your loved ones, your relatives, you know, if your boyfriend or girlfriend or your husband or wife, and like you have to go there and, you know, when you finish or you want to, you want to have a good result, you want to have a nice win, you want to share your success. But like, there's times where you're just like, in your head, you're like, wow, I lost aces to deuces, like with 12 left for, I should have won, you know, that pot was worth X yeah. amount of money. And it's like, it doesn't really matter. And it's just part of it all. And then you don't know, like, are you running? Cause there's times too. I mean, I've been playing for a long time. I'll talk to myself and I'm like, man, am I playing bad right now? Or am I <laughs> running bad? Or like when you win, it's like, oh, I'm playing, like, I must be playing good, but maybe you weren't even playing good and you just won some flips and got good mm -hmm. cards. Sometimes. So, you know, poker is a bit tricky like that. It's hard. It's good to be, do some work on your game and reflect on it. I think also important to understand that the game's won and lost in a lot of, smaller pots and showdowns and, and spots like the ace king to queens and the jacks to ace 10 off you know those hands happen right you got to win them you got to be on the right side you're gonna whatever but mm -hmm. ultimately i think it's like it's it's important to be able to be honest and understand how you're playing and if you know you're playing well or not what about studying how do you how do you work on your game do you do any peel solvers do you have groups with friends mm -hmm. how do you review and, and improve in your game so i definitely stalled out for a while i was thinking um i was I was getting writing jobs and I was thinking, I think I'm getting out of poker, which is weird. I never thought I would. Um, and I, I struggled with that for like probably two years where I just kept telling myself that I was getting out of poker. Like I would be a part-time poker player. And so I just kept finding reasons not to work on my game. Cause I was like, Oh, like I'm not going to really be in this. So why am I going to grind yeah. so hard? Why am I going to try so hard? And then uh, within the last year or so, I'm just like, I keep telling myself that and then I never leave. I just take on more jobs. Like I'm doing all the writing jobs, but I'm also grinding full time. So um, I just joined a group about a month ago. Um, Jesse Sylvia is one of my good friends and he actually lives in my neighborhood. And um, he started a group where it's like this big study group. And we've been working like, this is the most I've ever studied poker. I really just kind of like, I've been flying by the seat of my pants and it's not, you know, it's, it's working okay, but I, I feel like it could be much better. Um, right. And we're studying like, we have like five sessions a week and there's sometimes up to three hours. And uh, I'm really not good with software with like new stuff. Like I'm not a tech person. Yeah. But what's great about this is that he is and like he's doing a lot of the um, solver work. And then we're just like going over the like the concepts that we're gleaning from taking certain hand groups and certain flops and like figuring out bet sizing and things. Um, and we're doing a lot of work like that. And it's really making me like poker more. Like when I'm playing, I'm like thinking about things a little more deeply. And I feel like I really should have done this a long time ago. I think it's just one of those things that there are so many factors like for women um, over the age of 40, especially, I think they get looked down on if you have like a family, um, and things to worry about like that. And like, I've heard guys say to older women, oh, you're spending your husband's money or like, shouldn't like women get asked if who's watching the kid, if you're playing poker. And I'm like, guys right. don't get asked who's watching the kid when they're playing poker. I think there are like societal pressures that would make, um, women in certain areas, like homemakers, especially, or something like that, um, feel like they're doing the wrong thing with their life. Um, I think there might be some innate differences where we're not um not as risk inclined i guess i'm not sure about that though I, I think there's just a lot of things and i think sometimes the poker world can be a little bit hostile towards um new yeah. women in the game either objectifying them or the opposite we're just like with older women i feel like they get all the crappy parts of it where they might get called names or asked, you know, if they're spending their husband money, blah, blah 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 without any of the good stuff where it's like oh you're cute here's a sponsorship or like 
whatever else attention like they get only negative attention so um I don't know I think it's too tough like you, you could probably make a list of 20 reasons why and we won't ever know exactly what the, the real reason is but do you, do you think that there's a, a chance you, do you see any if, let's just say the poker open back in the U.S. completely um, do you feel that there would be maybe a spike in, in women by any chance or, or does that just like something you don't think they'll never change I, I think so. I think online poker helped women a lot. For, personally, it helped me a lot. I played a ton online um, after playing in that home game in uh, in Michigan. I just started playing on party poker and I like I was getting lots of reps in. And then by the time I got to a casino, I felt like I earned my spot there. Right. It wasn't easy to be bullied because I'm like, I probably saw thousands more hands than this guy who's saying mean things to me, whatever. I like I don't feel like I get treated poorly anymore. But when I first started, I, I think I was an easy target. I was like very nervous and, and it helped me to have like online poker in my back pocket where I was like, no, I'm, I'm making the right play. Like I've done this a lot. Right. I think that helps women a lot. And also um, just look at Daniel Anderson's story. She was able to grind like high limit zoom on full tilt while having a, a toddler because she could do it. She's like, oh, toddler's down for a two hour nap. I'm about to go grind this session you can't go to the casino in two hours and, and put in a session and come home to your kids. So right. I think online poker would help women get back into the game.